Hello everyone, Mary Ann from Revealing Light Tarot, Astrology and Spirituality. It's the 2nd of January 2022 here in Australia. And of course, in the, in the Northern Hemisphere, this would be your New Year's Day. So I want to wish everybody a happy, joyous, peaceful 2022. Um, I've looked at the astrology. This will be some general predictions. Uh, I've taken the time to look at the astrology and uh, I'll also be throwing cards. I've also uh, done some clairvoyance, contacting my spirit guides to see what might be coming up for us in 2022. How would I describe 2022? Well, you know, I think for those that were hoping for everything to return to normal, it's not going to be that. There is a very heavy accent on things coming to the surface, uh, on uh, us drawing lines in the sand around uh, where we want to be, uh, in some cases, who we want to be with uh, and how we want to do things. Uh, and that will vary from individual to individual. I see us understanding that democracy does not lie in the power of the government, but lies in the power of the people. And I think you know, if we thought that we'd already learnt enough, there's a little bit of a way to go, whether we're talking about COVID-19 mutations or if we're talking about governments that aren't accountable, aren't being transparent. Um, this is a major reset. <laughs> We've been saying that for years now and uh, we weren't saying it um, you know, uh, so, that, you know, for something to say, uh, it was blatantly obvious to us in 2020. If you go back to some of those readings around January 2020, we, we, we foreshadowed this. Um, there is some good news uh, as well. Um, and in, in, some in some sense, there are the silver linings. But let's just start with the astrology uh, before we go any further. Uh, these are key dates that I want to talk about. Um, there will be a partial solar eclipse on April the 30th, uh, and that is at 10 degrees 28 in Taurus. Uh, there will be a total, lo total lunar eclipse on May the 16th at 25 degrees 18 in Scorpio. There will be a partial solar eclipse on October the 25th. That's the chart we're going to look at at two degrees in Scorpio because there's a huge accent on a major truth emerging. Then there will be, as we close down the year, a total, total lunar eclipse on the 8th of November at 16 degrees Taurus. Um, some of the planetary, uh, I guess, placements um, that stood out to me, Saturn in Aquarius, uh, where our ideals will be tested, but also needing to come up with solutions to problems that have been around for some time. Uranus in Taurus uh, needing to have those practical innovative um, solutions to the problems that we will continue to face in a way in 2022. Jupiter moving into Pisces at the end of December. It's almost like uh, the, we understand the past and how we got here and what needs to change. And in, in a way that is uh, something, an awareness that's going to hit that collective consciousness. Um, we still have the very difficult square of Uranus, Uranus and Saturn squaring, uh, but not exact. Um, but when they get very close in degrees, I feel that's where we have these major, major, um, I guess, major events that impact on us. Uh, I, if you look back on my past astrology readings, you'll understand that we were talking about the uh, Omicron tsunami in the last exact Uranus Saturn square at, at the end of December. Neptune in Pisces um, and in many uh, me, at, at key, key eclipses or key astrological events, 
Jupiter is sitting right alongside Neptune in Pisces. Now, in a way, that can be a good thing because the accent is on our spirituality and surrendering, in a way, to those lessons of the past. There's a lot of acceptance and letting go uh, in the astrology in 2022. Um, but it can also re heighten that illusion and delusion. So I want to also look at the rise of extremism um, in 2022. Uh, Pluto in Capricorn is, is that's where uh, it, it continues to reside in 2022. And it is all about power and responsibility, whether we're handing that over to those that we are seeing, of course, a lot of this truth emerging is about decisions, accountability and transparencies of government globally uh, across the world, regardless of the country you're, you're living in. But it's also asking us to take back our power and responsibility. So that's a little bit on the astrology. Uh, we will look at the October 25th chart. Um, and just, I just, this is where I think we're going to get some major, major truth emerging. Got to remember which one it is. Um, okay, so these uh, charts, I was being lazy. I actually downloaded them off <laughs> Cafe Astrology. Thank you, Cafe Astrology. So we have this Uranus, uh, Uranus Saturn square that I was talking about, that every time it was exact in 2022, along with Neptune in Pisces, we seemed to get a hit of COVID, a mutation, whether it was, uh, you know, Delta or Omicron. So uh, on October the 25th, um, at this, uh, um, sorry, I'll just go back to my notes, uh, which I painstakingly took over the last couple of days. Um, on October the 25th, this partial solar eclipse in Scorpio. You can see here that uh, Uranus, uh, Uranus is at uh, 31 degrees in Taurus and the square is to Saturn at 36 in Aquarius. So, uh, sorry, Uranus is 17 degrees 31 and the square is to Saturn at 18 degrees 36. Not exact, but, but very, very close. What's really interesting, if you think about Pluto and power and responsibility, we've got the square here. Uh, to the moon and the sun in Scorpio. Now, remembering Scorpio does the deep dives. Remembering Scorpio, the, is, the south node is in Scorpio, the north node is in Taurus. Uh, understanding uh, truth coming to the surface, uh, we can't hide from it. Um, and also letting go, letting go of something. What are we letting go of? It's something very, very major. Uh, with this square to uh, Pluto uh, in Capricorn. And we get to make, to just to add everything to the mix, we've got uh, Pluto in Capricorn squaring uh, Mercury in Libra here. And so that tells me that uh, a major, major truth or uh, is going to come to the surface. And to me, it, it is around justice. And I do, my feeling is that this will be some kind of finding around the insurrection uh, at that time. It may have to do with the money webs globally as well. Um, you know, we're seeing the, the profit over people type of scenario. More and more, it's becoming very, very obvious. And those groups that are being left behind uh, are also becoming very, very obvious. So um, that to me uh, is going to be a really significant time. Uh, and of course, Uranus in Taurus, you know, is it's that change of, uh, it's that planet and placement of change uh, and very, very quick change. And of course, Taurus being a fixed sign it's like if we were looking for easy fixes during 2022, we're just not going to get them. Um, here we see um, Jupiter and Pisces, uh, Jupiter uh, having moved uh, for a short time into Aries. Uh, and, uh, and, and of course, we know that's going to be assertion, even aggression driving forward, uh, perhaps with those that can't see the truth reacting to whatever 
is going to be revealed uh, around this um, around this time and perhaps taking some sort of assertive or aggressive action. Um, and of course, Mars in Gemini squaring both Neptune in Pisces, Jupiter in Aries, uh, let, tells us that the, uh, the tension or the conflict will be on the truth that is, has been proved and those that are seeking to deny that truth. So watch that particular um, eclipse there, I feel. Now, when we move to uh, clairvoyance, I'm just moving this in, um, just before I, uh, when I opened up for the reading, I asked various questions um, of my guides um, and also did some clairvoyance here. I think uh, in my, my intuition tells me, even though I don't want it to be true, that COVID will continue um, in 2022 with uh, varying intensities in various locations. Unfortunately, I feel it has a way to play out. Um, uh, and uh, I feel it also will cause people to focus on themselves and move away from constantly looking for the answer to, to a government that really isn't transparent um, and in some ways has let us down. Uh, I also feel that we learn that we are stronger than what we currently think we are. I feel co this COVID-19 will ease as we move into 2023. Uh, but not it's not going to be over just yet, as much and all as we want. Um, this latest variant, Omicron, to put an end to it. Uh, it globally, that's not going to be the case. I feel that this um, puts further strain on our economies, and I feel that we're going to see a real economic tightening um, in, uh, th that will begin in 2022 and uh, uh, become more critical in 2023. I think governments worldwide, there will be a tightening of the belts because there has to be in 2022 with reduced government spending. In all of that, we find our resilience. Of course, we start to wonder if uh, we want to go and, you know, shop till our heart's content at um, Black Friday sales or whatever the sale happens to be. We start to conserve, we start to look at ways that we can live more simply. I got the date May in terms of the economy. May 2022 is going to be significant. Um, so COVID and the economy, we'll, we'll look at that via the tarot. Um, the... Uh, I guess the rise of extremism, which is threatening democracies. Um, I do feel that in a way we find, because we have to, we find more common ground than what we originally thought we had in, uh, in some of our democracies, not all. Um, the drive is toward, um, I guess, removing the blinkers because that's not protecting our choice. Um, and as I said before, that Capricorn in Pluto reminds us that democracy begins at the community level, that the real power is at the community level and uh, not democracy doesn't sit with governments, even though that's the rhetoric, it sits with us. And I think we find that out. Any uh, political movement that is community based will have a chance of growing and thriving um, I feel, you know, some of us are worried about global stability, particularly we look toward Russia uh, amassing troops at the Ukraine border and, of course, America stepping in uh, and having those series of uh, conversations um, or, I guess, diplomatic sessions with Putin over this. I feel there will be within Russia and there, are pro there already is an anti-Putin rise and part of his strong arm tactics at the Ukrainian border is as much to do with his domestic popularity as it is to do with anything else. I think that anti-Putin uh, rise within his own uh, borders uh, will continue. 
I do feel there will be more talk of civil, uh, a civil kind of war insurrection type rhetoric uh, throughout 2022 in the US. And this October date, uh, the partial eclipse could be one uh, month that we could watch for, where if a major truth arises around uh, perhaps uh, the ex-president Trump, uh, you could find uh, that uh, very anti uh, anti kind of government reaction playing out in terms of some kind of violence in the streets. I did get a a, a draw toward Oregon success, secession. They have been talking about that. That's the other talk that continues in 2022. Uh, there is not not a secession uh, as I see it. But I just get a pull to Oregon. So some of you in that area that know of a, a plan to secede a particular part of Oregon can um, advise us uh, more fully. In terms of climate change, I did get a pull last year to a, a, a major earthquake in South America in the country of Chile. Um, now, I get that again. So maybe what I was picking up then is more to do with 2022. So I feel that there will be that earthquake activity around the Chile area. Um, continuing extreme weather events, uh, polar storm, snow like, um, uh, I guess, uh, record setting type uh, of storms and wildfires continue. And it really does push our uh, emphasis for climate change action, and that will only uh, accelerate in uh, 2022, along with these weather patterns. I think any government that doesn't put climate change action uh, into their equation, um, they, will, they will lose, lose support. So I feel that, there, that that demand for action just continues to intensify. Um, so I don't think Omicron will be our last uh, mutation, unfortunately. I, I, I don't think that's the end of it, uh, as I was saying. Going back to, pardon me, the, um, the major truth that emerges, I know a lot of my viewers are uh, no fans of the ex-president. I get the word culpable. So whatever is brought forward on around October um, in, in terms of justice and major truths emerging, there is the word culpable uh, there. So whether that's to do with negl negligence, inaction, culpability. Um, and I do feel that is around the insurrection. Um, all right, let's move to the tarot now. Uh, before we do move, I do want to show you uh, just a couple of photos that I took. Um, and I do want to emphasise that with every ending, we earn a new beginning. Everything that we can bring to a close, we earn a sunrise. Um, so uh, with that in mind, I just want to um, share the screen again for one more minute. Um, Okay, so I took this uh, photo on New Year's Eve and it was as the sun was setting. I wanted to take it to, uh, to mark the closing down of 2021. I don't think 2021 20, has been easy for any of us. Um, but we are ending. We are ending things that no longer serve us, that no longer work for us. So uh, for those that are going, oh no, 2022, more of the same, no. No, we are definitely ending things that are no longer serving us. We are ending the lies because they no longer serve us. We are breaking down structures, particularly uh, pa around power and responsibility in government that has been abused. We are breaking down those and, and taking that power away from them. Um, we are learning to live in a more, instead of quantity and, and wanting everything and wanting everything yesterday, we are learning to live uh, with more value on our earth, with more value on our community, with more value on individual choice. Um, and I do want to also 
show you the sunrise that I took on the 1st of January 2022. Sorry, <laughs> let's just go back to that photo. You can just see the moon there uh, and the sun is coming. Well, uh, the sun is visible uh, in the sunrise there. Um, and so we're moving very much in those photos or the sim symbols there that I wanted to um, illustrate is moving from the darkness to the light. Uh, and I think if we remember that, um, that we are moving away from darkness and we are moving into what is the light, what is the light, the light of awareness, the light of truth, then you can see that 2022 demands from us action demands from us choice uh, and demands uh, from us change. And change is often necessary uh, and uh, often beneficial, but it's always inevitable. Change is always inevitable. So let's move to the cards. Um, I just want to pull some overarching cards. I'm using the Mystical Shaman Oracle. So what are the messages from spirit for us in 2022? Messages from spirit. All the collective messages from spirit. So we have medicine wheel. There is a lot that needs to be healed. Um, three and five, spiritual solutions to change. We will be drawing uh, part of our re resilience is our spiritual connection. And our spiritual connection is not just to God or goddess or whatever the whatever um, God you worship. It's, it's to ourselves. It's to the sanctity of ourselves and, our, and those that we love. And so, uh, again, when I look at what is beginning, what is the sunrise? The sunrise is on healing, healing ourselves. Uh, and there's something about time here and, affin uh, and infinity, that understanding that love is infinite. It's not rationed. It isn't rationed like the economy or dollars or, um, you know, rapid antigen tests or whatever it is that's rationed. Um, or welfare or, uh, you know, profits. It's, it's nothing, there, there is nothing being rationed with love. It is free. Strength, shedding all skins, freedom. The ghost dance, uh, 2022. 20, 20, this is a lot about 2022 is about past. It's about learning from the past. It's, you know, I would say karma you know, an accumulation of karma. But the ghost dances, uh, it's about our ancestors and it's about what we bring forward from the past. And part of that is learning, bringing something into form. When we do that, we need to, to learn the lesson, lessons of the past. And I particularly go to the US and to, uh, I'm afraid, to the civil war there. I'm not saying there will be civil war, but some of these conditions, they have their Pluto return, uh, will bring forward the same sort, similar sorts of energies as what was present back, uh, back then. We look to our ancestors for the lessons. What are we going to avert in 2022? Because we have that greater awareness. Now we have the crow here, listening to the messages, uh, listening to your ancestors, listening to uh, your passed over loved ones, whatever, really listening to your insight. The crow is about transformation. The crow appears when there is great change and great transformation. And I feel this is both at, you know, the individual and the collective level. Luminous warrior, we will all be called upon to find that strength within us, to become our own individual luminous warrior. This isn't a, a time for, uh, you know, for apathy or complacency. It's a time where we need to act on our personal choices as well as our political choices. Um, so let's take it question by question. Uh, COVID in 2022. 
uh, three cards is all I'm going to be drawing uh, for an overarching look at COVID in 2022, COVID in 2022. You know, how a society looks after their vulnerable, uh, the immunocompromised, those with health conditions um, is a real determinant of the, of, of the quality of that society. If we're not doing that, it, we're creating a situation of karma, just as I said that justice and karma here. And Seven of Pentacles, uh, this is both economic uh, downturn, reviewing um, because the harvest isn't coming, so we have to go back to Plan B. I feel there will be many Plan Bs in 2022. Uh, so this is very much a karmic time, is what we're seeing in terms of COVID and how it is hitting the economy and how we're looking after our most vulnerable. There will be steps forward. Um, this is also communication. So uh, some governments, whether they be at the state level or federal level, are fudging the numbers. I go to Florida um, and also uh, my home state, uh, less and less transparency. But nevertheless, people, it's people power here again. A page is not a king or a queen, but a page is stepping forward nevertheless. Um, underneath here we have Page of Cups. There's going to be um, many surprises in relation to COVID in, 2000, in 2022. Uh, if we were hoping that it was going to magically disappear, no, it's not. It's all part of what we need to let go. And it affects our abundance. Uh, it drives home the uh, messages for governments that are letting it rip for economic reasons, they will be brought down to their knees, understanding that people and health uh, are very much part of that economic equation. If you don't have healthy people, you don't have a healthy economy. So they're going to be brought to the table one way or, or another. Uh, this is part of an overall uh, theme for 22 in relation to truth emerging and justice. Okay, now the rise. Um, so economies will, uh, they'll, they'll need to be innovative solutions. So let's have a look at solutions to problems and you can't expect governments everywhere to be tightening their belt. Um, as a matter of practical necessity, practicality uh, and necessity, two, two things. <laughs> okay, so let's have a look at the rise of extremism. Now, part of me is feeling that we have more common ground because of the ridiculousness of the rhetoric and the extremists. Uh, it's almost like, you know, they've had their zenith and they are um, reduced to very much a vocal, loud minority that's pretty much talking to themselves. But that will be different depending on whatever country you're in. The more unified the country, the greater uh, the greater the demise is of um, extremism. That, and I will say for the states, the more unified the states, uh, the less fanaticism you're going to see there. Um, Okay, so let's take a look at the rise of extremism, please. Rise of extremism. Yeah, I am seeing lies. Extremism really amounts to lies. So we've got the tower here. Okay, so in, you know, this is particularly relevant, unfortunately, for my uh, second, second home, the US. Um, I feel like it's a second home. I know that I've lived lives in that country, uh, hence my draw to, um, draw to its culture and society. But I uh, do see the tower moment. What is the tower moment? Pluto in Capricorn, power and responsibility. Uh, this is very much the insurrection um, and the attempt to, uh, to destroy democracy in the US will be, that situation will be current there uh, all year. And I do feel culminates in major truths being exposed. Um, the three of cups, because we've got this breaking down of structures via COVID or extremism, extre you know, it's almost one in the, 
COVID was the ripe soil for extremism, extremism to flourish. And so in a way we are, you know, alternatively, alternatively more united than what we think because we are in the middle of this tower moment. And so there will be common ground uh, found even between the extremists in some sense and the those that are, are not uh, that are more more moderate and the reason will be because of that tower there and we have the ace of pentacles um, so a lot of it again um, extremism sells extremism sells you know and uh, you can look at uh, many supposed light workers <laughs> for a start that embrace uh, conspiracy theories um, you know their views etc go through the roof um, you will see lawyers that peddle the big lie uh, and and a lot about ex a lot of what a lot of the push for extremism again Pluto and Capricorn um, power and responsibility and uh, we've got money here. So uh, there will be continuing, I think, um, this extremist for uh, profit, extremism for profit. Uh, but we also, because of the tower here, because we are transforming, this is Saturn and Uranus energy, absolutely. We find common ground with those that think differently from us. Uh, but what we need to watch are the lies, the big lies, uh, because I did clairvoyantly see that seven of swords. And, and it is about power, it is about, it is about money, um, making money. It's, it's the big lie equals the big grift, the ace of pentacles. And we, we see that playing out um, horrendously, blatantly in the US. Now, the Six of Wands, we've got victory here. It's interesting to see what is who and what is victorious. Those that are unified, those that are unified are victorious. And these situations in countries where they have unity, in states where they have unity, will have the victory. They will be able to work together to produce um, stability whether it's economic or health or um, trade security. And of course, we start to see uh, st stable governments equaling a more resilient economy. So again, if I go to my good friends in the US, you have a stable government and that speaks volumes in 2022. Okay, so, and against the rise of extremism, you have, wherever there's stability and unity, you will get uh, extremism being knocked back into the uh, minority, the loud minority. And I think the courts are, are playing their role in that stable law is serving you well. Okay, global stability. What are we looking at with global global stability? You can you can see how that tower is playing out in terms of extremism. Now let's see global uh, stability, and in particular, I'm searching here for any war. One of the images that I got uh, was there could be an assassination of a Middle Eastern um, leader. Uh, I think it is an Arab leader, but I, I can't be sure. But uh, I did see them in that, that headdress. So that it looks to be like there will be some kind of assassination of a Middle Eastern leader, somebody very, very, very wealthy. Um, let's see. Okay. So um, show me global stability in 2022. So we've got the Knight of Wands, um, projects, plans, moving forward, quick movement, um, defending oneself. So there will be the, these aggressive pushes uh, and the Five of Swords abuse of power. So global stability will be undermined uh, by those countries that are simply looking to uh, move ahead with territorial claims, um, global stability will be influenced. It seems like there are plans to do that. I go to China and Russia. 
eight of pentacles i only said three didn't i but this is around trade abuse also of trade agreements so we have the queen of pentacles stability that's the energy at the base here and the sun which is good energy in the um the ace of pentacles at the base of the pack so it shows me in terms of stability there are those countries that are working against to prevent this type of this type of abuse this type of uh moving forward uh, I think that Russia, Russia's um, accumulation of troops at the beginning in the first quarter of this year or dominates the beginning of 2022. We do have um, miracles, wish fulfillment. So I feel that the world is reasonably stable uh, and will keep the Russians and the Chinas in check uh, through unification. Um, I'm going to Afghanistan as well. There will need to be done, something will, that's about to break open famine um, and the decisions of the past are here, are coming back to haunt us. There is going to be a need for unified action on, in, on, in Afghanistan to prevent genocide, which is occurring uh, as we speak. It's just going to break right open in um, this first part of 2022. Now we go to justice and truth, my favorite subjects with that Libra moon of mine, justice and truth in 2022. Justice and truth in 2022. Something has jumped out. We've got the three of pentacles rebuilding what is being torn down. There will be a need for that justice and truth coming together working uh, working together to rebuild justice our justice systems which are have been so badly threatened justice and truth show me justice and truth it's almost like we need to rebuild after the last couple of years so we have six of swords moving out of troubled waters through working together and remaining hopeful to me that says ace of pentacles uh new start to me that says we remove the money we start bringing forward those uh reforms in politics uh, we start putting uh barriers around the uh, whether it's pork barreling whether it's giving some states more than others whatever the situation is we're starting to want to there's an orb there rebuild our truth in poly the political system and that is hopeful that is hopeful in 2022 why because we are manifesting that because what this is what uranus squaring saturn also does showing us breaking down old structures showing us it's time to rebuild something and rebuild it better rebuild it better and we will make steady progress on that I do feel that the um, <laughs> our King of Pentacles uh, and foreign influence in pol politics will be blatantly obvious. And we've got the boundaries, the reform that needs to take place. Now, the moon card here shows me that October the 25th could be about Trump and the insurrection, whether it's a criminal uh, referral, in more likely an indictment or even a proven offence. Uh, there is something around the insurrection and Trump coming forward at the time of that eclipse in October for the US. All right, so uh, in relation to Trump, you showed me that moon card, you showed me the King of Pentacles, you showed me foreign shores, you showed me money. Um, let's take a look at this. We've got the Knight of Swords, the truth emerging here um, in relation to what I was just speaking of. Show me uh, justice for the ex-president in 2022. So we have uh, new starts. It's also a lot of emotion here. And uh, we've got mortally wounded. Uh, yeah, it's the end for him. 2022 is the end of his power. I can say that almost <laughs> categorically. Uh, <laughs> It's the eight of uh, cups time. Um, it's the end. It's the end of his political power in 2022. 
Okay, so uh, now for government truth and justice in relation to all government accountability, regardless of what country you're living in, what are we, what are we going to see here? Uh, and justice comes in a, maybe comes in a form that you're not expecting either, is what I'm getting. Um, what is the, uh, that karmic justice for a power and responsibility at government level? Truth and Justice in 2022. Okay, so we have here Page of Wands. We're going to hear about any uh, lack of transparency, accountability. The Queen of Wands, uh, those that, um, uh, you know, the women vote is going to be extremely important in 2022, no matter which, cu which country you're in. That's the rise of the divine feminine. Um, she doesn't need anybody or anything. She doesn't need the marketing. She doesn't need the spin. She's already made up her minds. Uh, if those governments have abused their power, she will see that something is done about it. So the likely scenario in 2022 is governments can't hide uh, this kind of lack of transparency, accountability, and uh, you will see changes of governments where there are elections. You will see those governments that have abused their power will be voted out because people want this new start. They want to be motivated. They want governments that have a plan and they want governments that bring them along uh, with them. Uh, yeah, ending a judgment, wow. Ending a ju judgment. People want new starts. So if your uh, country has an election in 2022, expect a change. Expect a change of government. Okay, one last card for all of us to get off the political. Um, what for the individuals is uh, so important in 2022? What for? What is uh, so important for us to see as individuals? in 2022 what do we need to see as individuals i've seen the ace of cups uh and we've got the ghost dance yeah Re learning from the past is basically the me message the ghost dance uh, for the individual listen to the voice of your ancestors uh you know spiritual connect connecting spiritually will raise our vibration raise our awareness and put us in a resilient um a resilient strength. Uh, I guess that, that that those two words mean the same thing, um, but will make us more resilient in 2022. But this is about learning from the past. Learning from the past um, very much is a theme in 2022 for the individual and dare I say it, for the collective, because why? Because we are healing. We are healing what needs to be healed and changing what needs to change. Thank you, everybody, for joining me. These are my predictions for 2022, and I'm kind of needing to go and hydrate now. It's very hot here, and my laptop is protesting. Uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, I'll be back again soon. All the best for 2022.